Hi everyone. This is Erica Supa coming live from my Chaz Ford location in between clients today. Happy Friday uh, on this rainy Friday. <laughs> it's been raining for the last two weeks in Delaware. I don't understand it. It's like I moved to Seattle and I have no idea when I did that. Um, today I want to talk about a good question that I had earlier this week. It's a, it's a common question that I get a lot and that is uh, how, how, what are broken capillaries? These little red squiggly lines on my face. How did I get them? They just appeared or how do I get rid of them? Is there a way to get rid of them? These are all good questions and I want to address that today. Um, again, this was a question that I got from a comments in one of the videos. So if you would, uh, please keep doing that. I appreciate that very much. This helps me pick topics about what you want to hear, right? So I could talk all day about whatever I want, but whatever is important to you, that's really what I want to address. So the broken capillaries, what are they? They're those red or pink squiggly lines that you see sometimes on the face, around the nose, um, ar around the cheeks usually is a common place for that. You can visibly see them on everybody in the eyes. They are the red lines that you see in our eyes. And what they are is that they're tiny blood vessels and they're the smallest ones in the body. They're blood vessels, so what do they do? they carry blood so they're carrying oxygen they're carrying nutrients to the all we have them all throughout our body they're responsible for bringing all of these uh, bringing necessary oxygen to tissues and they also get rid of waste products they have a diameter that's very very thin it's like the size of a strand of hair so why are they you know we know that they transport these materials why are they so thin so they're thin because they need to quickly pass these materials you know all day long back and forth. That's why they're very thin for the diffusion property of them. So why do they appear on the face or how can we you know, avoid that on the face? And so there's some reasons that are known to cause them that uh, they weren't there before and all of a sudden that they are. Excessive alcohol consumption, excessive caffeine consumption are two things that um, you could avoid and prevention of these are very key because they are so thin that they're very fragile and they're right in the under right underneath the surface of the skin so they're very easily broken and they're not really broken so they're not broken in half um, they're not damaged in any way they're just weakened that's really the mistake a lot of people say they're referred to as broken capillaries but they're really weakened and because they have a weakened wall, that very thin wall anyway, to begin with, so very, you can imagine it's very easy, easily weakened. And what happens is they appear red and they show the red as the blood, it's, it's dilated now, so it's, it's more open. So alcohol consumption, I said, caffeine consumption, uh, that's easy to help avoid those. It's very um, a lot easier to help prevent these rather than try to correct these because there really is no real correction. They're permanently uh, dilated if you can see them uh, on your skin. So that there's two right there. Um, another one is scrubbing too hard on the face, like excessive scrubbing, like with a scrub or trying to attempting to clean your face harder or with a washcloth, using water that's too hot versus warm water. So that's an easy correction for prevention. Excessive sun exposure is another one. Uh, use sunscreen all, all year round, whether it's winter or summer, to help avoid that. And any type of facial injuries is very easy, easily. Any type of pressure um, on this facial skin area can cause those. So along with the pressure like blowing your nose a lot excessively and hard will have people have them very commonly around the nose area. This is another uh, way that they could appear. And another one that I tell all of my clients is to not wash your face in the shower by putting your face in the shower stream itself. So putting your face right in that water. Why? Because that water pressure coming out of the shower head is going to be too rough, too hard. So instead, the convenience of, of cleansing in the shower, I get it. So instead, pretend you're washing in the sink and pull up the water in your hands in the shower 
and then wash your face that way rather than putting your face in the stream because you're going to save yourself a lot of headaches down the road because it's so they're so fragile and just right there uh, and as we age we have a weakened structure of our skin anyway with that elastin and collagen depleting so it makes them all more all the more fragile and this is why usually people see them when they're older rather than when they're younger but even younger people can do get it too if they put their face in the stream of the water so avoid that Th those are great avoiding mechanisms to help prevent them so what types of things once you have them the only way to really rid them is to go to a dermatologist and I think lasers are the gold standard to help get rid of these broken capillaries or weakened capillaries and I would ask there may be other treatments but the only one I'm familiar with is laser treatment and that's expensive that's a big downside and other disadvantages doesn't always work I've had people come in and say that it didn't work so avoidance is key and even though you may have great results and get laser treatment from a dermatologist and hey great I got rid of some of these big prominent ones that I had you still need to treat the skin you still have to do that because you still have to strengthen that capillary structure ongoing this is something that doesn't end you can always get the, these at any time so what type of ingredients topically can we use to help strengthen the capillary structure and I'm going to give you four of those in the order that I think that uh, is most important so you may want to you know write this down or or what whatever you want to do to remember this or watch this video again um, but I recommend this in a serum uh, product rather than a moisturizer or something like that so these ingredients you look for these ingredients but look for them in a serum product because a serum is going to penetrate the layers of the skin and be, be more effective for you so the number one ingredient that I recommend to strengthen the capillary structure is vitamin C the second one is chamomile and it's also been suggested to drinking chamomile tea orally will help as well so definitely in a product uh, chamomile has great properties for strengthening the capillaries another ingredient is vitamin K and then another ingredient would be rose oil so those are my four top ingredients that you could use in a topical formulation and again I recommend a serum more than anything else to penetrate the layers of the skin and become effective vitamin C is number one it's my go-to I recommend that for everybody chamomile would be number two and a lot of these you can get together there's a lot of formulations in the market that um, have both ingredients or more than one of these types of ingredients in one formulation vitamin K is my third and then rose oil is my last recommendation so again I hope this really helped you I hope that uh, you get you gain some knowledge from this today and if you would please uh, send me your feedback and uh, ask any questions uh, that you want to know about any topics or anything I will address those in a later video so for now have a great weekend guys I appreciate it